Hello everyone, it's so good to be here yet again. I find it curious that me being a game developer, well, specifically a level designer, hence the shirt today. I find it curious that I mostly talk about film and not that often about video games. So I think I should make an effort to at least ever so frequently talk about some games that I'm playing recently. And lo and behold, I just finished the latest Legend of Zelda game, Echoes of Wisdom. And indeed, this is the first adventure where we get to play as a titular Princess Zelda herself. So indeed, we are breaking new grounds over here in so many ways. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but why do I feel more like a necromancer than a princess in this game. You literally have this cloning abilities where you can create these echoes, so whichever object you've came across, you can reuse them, or in this case, enemies. So you can literally summon endless hordes of minions at your disposal. Obviously, this game's aesthetic is super cute, but whenever I take a step back and think about it, it is a little eerie. No matter, the part of this game mechanic that I find most represents the princess aesthetics is the fact that you could summon a bed at any moment to take some much needed power nap to heal yourself. Yes, our princess needs her beauty sleep. She is, after all, the one saving Hyrule this time because Link is indisposed. And speaking of Link, I do think the combat side of this game is the element that disappoints me the most. So this is a bit of a spoiler, but I imagine by now pretty much everyone knows about it. In any case, one of the main mechanics you discover in this game, as you usually do in Zelda games when you go through dungeons, you unlock the ability to pretty much transform to this uh, phantom version of Link where you can use all his regular abilities, which is super disappointing when you consider that this is literally the first time you get to play as Zelda and instead of giving her the spotlight and characterizing her with her own unique way of dealing with challenges, here we are basically playing Link once again. So I do think it's a major missed opportunity. And furthermore on the combat side of things, I find that pretty much from the beginning of the game up until the end, the general flow of combat never really evolved. Sure you get some new summons that are more powerful comparatively and there are some little tweaks here and there that change things up but for the vast majority of the experience it's kind of the same. And seeing how combat takes a pretty big slice of the pie of the overall gameplay experience of Echoes of Wisdom, I do find that it is pretty disappointing overall. Nothing terrible, it's still a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, but there it is, those are my criticisms. Now, the rest of the game is a much stronger positive experience as far as I'm concerned. The puzzle design is great. Like I mentioned, you have this really great mechanic, so clearly Nintendo is continuing their very systemic approach to Zelda that he started in Breath of the Wild and continued in Tears of the Kingdom, and personally, I'm all for it. Puzzle challenges you have here, it's not just about building a path, though that in itself is a clever little puzzle. Puzzle. Sometimes, however, you're presented with these really unique physics challenges, which the game doesn't explicitly tell you how you should deal with them, but once you wrap your head around it, there's always a very clever aha moment. So yes, you always feel clever solving puzzles in this game, though I will say that the puzzles are maybe a little on the easy side, though keep in mind that one of the last games I played was Lorelei and the Laser Eyes, so I think every puzzle game for quite a while is going to be really easy in comparison. Though that aside, I really do want to highlight just how inventive the game mechanics are, and there are plenty of ingenious ways you can reuse the mechanics that the game never really explains to you. I might recommend checking out a YouTube video or two because the game has some really clever tricks up sleeve. And furthermore, on top of the puzzles being a little easy, I do find that the dungeons, though being a massive highlight of the game, are a little on the short side. I genuinely feel that there's not enough meat on the bones here. I would just blast through them in no time whatsoever, and that is on top of pretty much solving all the optional challenges that the dungeons present to you. And finally, the graphics are super cute. I really love the aesthetics they chose here. And for such a game with these kind of complex systemic nature, it is pretty impressive that as far as I can tell, the whole experience is pretty much bug free. So the developers here really have to be praised on that. Though, however, on a more negative side, pretty much everyone has echoed these same issues. <laughs> no pun intended, that whenever you go in the open world, there's a noticeable frame rate drop, which is kind of shocking when you compare it to a game like Tears of the Kingdom, which is pushing the limits of the Nintendo Switch, the extremities. In that game, you can understand why the frame rate would drop, but here in this game where the complexity of the geometry is much more simple and it just has so much less density of things happening all at the same time, it is a bit of a head scratcher. So I not sure what's going on over here. Though nonetheless, this is still a very satisfying Zelda adventure that is super creative. So I do highly recommend it if you are a fan of the series already, and if you are looking for a really interesting Switch game to play for the rest of the year. I'd say I'm ranging between a 7.5 to an 8 out of 10. Not necessarily the best entry in the Zelda series, but still a very enjoyable one. And having a game like this follow Tears of the Kingdom, I'm just curious to see, well, what's gonna be the next giant step in this franchise? I'm guessing they'll be continuing the systemic nature, but you never know. As a game developer, I've been pretty damn blown away by what they've been doing, so I'll be curious to see whenever that time comes. Their release cycles have slowed down considerably, which is understandable given the gargantuan complexity of games that they've been tackling lately. So with all that being said, wishing you and your loved ones nothing but the best. Take care and talk to you soon.